Hey, it's Larry Lursey. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to learn how to add a lens flare effect in Photoshop. You know, a lot of times we're trying to avoid lens flare. We might even wear a uh, lens shade on our lens to uh, try and keep that light from hitting the glass and causing all kinds of unwanted consequences. But today we're going to learn how to add it for an artistic effect. Most importantly, we're going to learn how to do it non-destructively. So if you change your mind later and decide you want to modify it or maybe get rid of it altogether, you're not committed to having that lens flare on your main image. I'll also leave a link down in the comments telling you how you can download the sample image that I'm using in case you'd like to follow along with me. So. Without any further ado, let's roll the intro. Okay, so here's the image we're going to use. I got this off Unsplash, and I've got a link in the description if you want to uh, download it and follow along yourself. But here's all we're going to do. It's a pretty simple process, but I'm going to show you um, I'm going to show you the super simple way to do it and then kind of show you the slightly better way of doing it. And the super simple way is we've got the image just like this. We are just going to go up to filter, render, lens flare, uh, and it's going to give you this preview pane right here and we can move this around. We can stretch it out, we can rotate however we want. You just want to make sure that this little crosshair is uh, on or really close to the light source. Like that. That's the first thing you've got to do. The uh, brightness here you can adjust. Pretty self-explanatory how bright you want that to go. We're going to leave it at 100 because we'll adjust it down later if we need to. And then the lens type, which is going to kind of show the type of flare that you would normally get if this was happening normally and the 50 to 300 is the one I use most of the time but you can experiment with the others see what they look like um, the movie prime one seems very weird but uh, most of the others I think work well but uh, I like the either the 5300 or the 35 if you like just having the one but let's go with this zoom one I think that makes kind of a nice look right there again you can decide on how far off you want it to be and uh, we're just going to stick it right about like that. I think that works nice because it gives it down in this corner. So once we've got those settings how we want them, we hit OK. And there you go. You've got this cool lens flare on your image. Now, here's the problem with the way we did it is we did it destructively. And so what that means is that we're kind of stuck with it now. We can't really go back and change anything because we've actually done it to the image. So first thing I'm going to do is do Command Z or Control Z on the PC get rid of that start over again now what we want to do is do this on its own layer that way if we decide later that we want to go back and maybe even remove it or alter it in some way it's not permanently affixed to the image all right so now let's look at the better way of doing this first thing you want to do we're going to pretend we've started over fresh with this image first thing we're going to do is go up here and just go through the whole process again we're going to go to filter render lens flare go through the same steps, decide where we want it, decide which one, so that it looks nice, hit OK. I'm going to make sure that we're happy with this, okay? Once we're, once we're, that's good, assuming that we like how this looks, we're going to do Command Z to get rid of it. Now you may be wondering why we went through that extra step. Don't worry, I'm going to explain here in just a second. Next thing we're going to do, come down here and create a new layer by clicking on the little square with the plus sign. Now we've got a blank layer here. Unfortunately, if you try to render on the lens flare on this blank layer, it won't work. Uh, it'll just tell you that, uh, that you can't do it because the, the layer's blank or something. Um, so it won't work. You have to have something on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill it with black. So we'll come up here to Edit, Fill. Make sure the contents say black. You've got a whole bunch of different options, but make sure it says black on this little drop down. Hit OK. All right, now we can't see anything. We've basically got this black layer sitting on top of our image. Okay? Perfect. So now what we're going to do, make sure we've got this black layer selected. We're going to go up here again to filter, but we don't even have to go all the way down here to render because we just did lens flare. It's right up here at the top. And so we will just go ahead and hit that. Here's the great thing about that is it did it right in the same spot where we had placed the lens flare last time. So now we know it's in a spot that's going to work for us, 
because that's how we did it the first go round. So that's why we did kind of the dry run um, and got rid of it is just so it would be sitting there in the memory. And when we do this black layer, it would start up. We're not just basically trying to set it blindly. So there we go. Now you might say, Larry, that's great, but I still, I can't see my image. All right, fair enough. What we're going to do now is we're going to change the blending mode right here from normal down to screen. And there you go. It's placed it on top. We can turn it off and on. And that way, if you decide that it's too strong, you can go ahead and bring the opacity down so that it's more subtle. Or let's say you think it's too weak. You can just make a copy of this, still in screen mode, and it'll amplify it even more. Now here's the other, I'm going to throw this top layer away. So we're just dealing with one. Here's the great thing about having this on its own layer is we can change this if we want. Let's say we think that this is too sharp uh, of a line here, especially with some of these, um, and we want to just soften that. Well, what we would do is go up here to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, incidentally named after someone named Gauze. True story. And that's going to bring up our little blur menu here. And again, we're not going to be able to see here because we're just blurring technically a black layer. Uh, we could move over. We could move actually to this little uh, ring here. But I feel it works better to have the preview on so we can see it in the context of the image. And um, you can kind of move it that way to about, let's say, three. It takes the edge off that a little bit. Hit OK. Um, you can further, you can go through and change uh, the color even. You could go up to image, adjust hue saturation, and then you could use this to change the color. Like that. Get it exactly how you like it. You could even play with the saturation so that it didn't have so much color, or you could add a ton more really kind of makes it into a kaleidoscope. So um, you got a lot of ways you can mess around with it that uh, will kind of give it a pretty cool look there. And uh, we'll hit OK. And again, all we've affected is this top layer, the, the flare itself. The image underneath um, hasn't been affected. It's untouched and it's still there if we decide, you know, I don't like the lens flare. That looks silly. I just turn it off and uh, there you go, we're back to that layer. So it's a pretty simple technique, and it's non-destructive, and uh, it works out really well. So there you have it, pretty cut and dry process. We did it on its own layer, so we can go back and modify it later, or completely get rid of it, and just have some nice options to work with. Uh, I'd love to know if this works for you. Try it out on one of your own images or on the sample image. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you run into any problem or if you're happy with the look. If you haven't done so already, I hope you'll take a second to like the video. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so that you know when new content comes out. But that's it for this week, and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.